So today's notes are about systems of linear inequalities. And systems of linear inequalities are really similar to systems of linear equations. But equations have equal signs and inequalities have inequality symbols like less than, greater than, less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to. So when we're solving systems of linear inequalities, we have to do so by graphing. So we'll graph each inequality separately and then see where their shaded regions overlap. So for example, 1a, it says graph the system of linear inequalities. Our first inequality is y is less than or equal to 3. And our second inequality is y is greater than x plus 2. So when we're graphing inequalities, we kind of want to compare them to their like equation version. So for y is less than or equal to 3, the equation version of that would be y is equal to 3. And then for y is greater than x plus 2, the equation version of that would be y is greater, or sorry, y is equal to x plus 2. So typically when we graph lines, we compare them to y equals mx plus b. So that we're able to figure out what the slope and the y-intercept are. Our slope is m and y-intercept is b. But if we look at our first line, the y is less than or equal to 3 or y is equal to 3, it looks a little bit different because we don't have that x term. We have the y equals still, just like in y equals mx plus b. We have the constant 3, just like the normal y-intercept, but we don't have m times x. And that's actually because the slope is 0. It's a flat line. So for the line y equals 3, that's going to be a horizontal line that goes through 3 on the y-axis. So we can put a point on 3 on the y-axis, and we just need to draw a horizontal line that goes through that point. And because this inequality is y is less than or equal to 3, it has an or equal to. When we graph it, it's going to be a solid line. And then when we're deciding which direction to shade, whether I shade on top or on bottom, we just need to pick one point, one that's not on the line, and plug that into our inequality and see if it makes it true or false. So the easiest point that to pick, that won't, if it's not, as long as it's not on the line, is typically 0, 0. So that's the point I'm going to use to check. So I'm going to take 0, 0, and I'm going to plug it into my inequality, y is less than or equal to 3. So since this inequality is just y is less than or equal to 3, there's no x, I just have to plug in that 0 for y, because that's the y coordinate. So when I do that, I end up with 0 is less than or equal to 3, which that's true. So that means that I shade the side of the line that has that point in it, that has 0, 0 in it. So I'm going to shade below the line which that makes sense because the inequality is y is less than or equal to 3, and anywhere below that line, all of the y-coordinates are less than 3. So now for my next inequality, y is greater than x plus 2, we're comparing that to the line, or we're using the equation y equals x plus 2 in order to graph it. So I'll be able to identify m and b from that equation. So if we look at y equals x plus 2, I know that m is always what's being multiplied by the x, but I don't see a number there. And if I don't see a number there, that means that m is 1. But sometimes it's easier to think of slope as a fraction, so I'm going to say it's 1 over 1, because I can put any number over 1 and it doesn't change its value. And then b is always the constant, the number that's not being multiplied by x, so b is 2. The last thing that we want to keep in mind before we graph it is that because this is just a greater than symbol, not greater than or equal to, it means that when we graph it, we need to have a dashed line instead of a solid line. So my slope is 1, my y-intercept is 2. So to graph it, I'm going to go to 2 on the y-axis and put a point there. And then my slope is 1. So remember that slope is rise over run, so I'm going to go up 1, right 1 to get to my next point. So up one, right one, and I can do that up one, right one as many times as I want. I can even go the opposite direction, I can go down one, left one. Make as many points as you need to get a pretty uh, accurate line, and then you can go ahead and connect them. Just remember that it should be a dashed line because it's just a greater than symbol, not greater than or equal to.
And then the next thing that we need to do is figure out which direction to shade. So we use the same strategy as we did with the red line with the y is less than or equal to 3. So if I want to determine which direction to shade, I need to pick a point that's not on the line. So 0, 0 is not on this line either. So I'm going to use 0, 0 again. And I'm going to substitute 0, 0 into my inequality, which was y is greater than x plus 2. So since I chose 0, 0, 0 is going to go in for x, and it's also going to go in for y, because those are the x and y coordinates. So I'll plug in 0 for y is greater than 0 goes in for x plus 2, and then we'll simplify the inequality and see if it's true or false. So on the left side, it's 0 and then greater than or equal to, and then 0 plus 2, so 2. And we end up with 0 is greater than 2, which is not true. So since it's not true, we have to shade the side of the line that does not include 0, 0. So I have to shade kind of the upper left area of the line. And then the solution to the system is anywhere where the shading overlaps. So it's going to be this region in here that has both the red and the blue shaded. So for the next example, it's y is greater than 2x minus 3, and y is greater than or equal to 1 half x plus 1. So we're still going to figure out kind of the equation version of each inequality, and that'll help us graph these lines. So for y is greater than x or 2x minus 3, the equation version of that is just y is equal to 2x minus 3. We just have to replace the inequality symbol with an equal sign. That makes it a little bit easier to start graphing it sometimes. And then for y is greater than or equal to 1 half one x plus 1, my equation version of that is y is equal to 1 half x plus 1. So we're not changing anything about the inequalities, just changing the inequality symbol to an equal sign. And then when we're ready to graph them, we want to figure out what m and what b are. So for my red line, y is equal to 2x minus 3. M is always, or the slope is always what's being multiplied by X, so M is 2. And then B is my constant, what comes after it when it's in Y equals MX plus B form. So B is negative 3. So once we know what M and B are, we're ready to start graphing. So B is where we begin. So on the Y axis, we'll go to negative 3 and put a point at negative 3. And then my slope is 2. Sometimes it's easier to think of slope as a fraction, so I can make it 2 over 1. And if slope is rise over run, that 2 over 1 is telling me that I need to go up to right 1. So from that negative 3 point, I'll go up 1 to right 1. And I can do that as many times as I want to get extra points as well. So I can go up to right 1 again, up to right 1 again. I can either go the opposite direction, I can go down to left one. And then before we connect our points, we just want to decide if it should be a dashed or a solid line. And because of this inequality symbol, because it's y is greater than, not greater than or equal to, we need to use a dashed line. And then the next thing that we need to do is check to see what side of the line that we need to shade. So 0, 0 is also not on this line, so I can pick that to check. So I'm going to pick 0, 0 as my checking point. So I'll substitute 0, 0 into my inequality. So y is greater than 2x minus 3. Since I pick 0, 0, that means that 0 is going to go in for x, and it's going to go in for y as well. So y becomes 0 is greater than or equal to 2 times x, and x becomes 0 as well, minus 3. 
and then we just need to simplify the inequality and see if it's true or false. So 0 is greater than or equal to 2 times 0, which is 0, minus 3. And then 0 is greater than or equal to 0 minus 3 is negative 3. So we end up with 0 is greater than negative 3, which 0 is greater than any pot or any negative number. So this inequality is true. So we have to shade the side of the line that has 0, 0 in it. So we'll shade kind of the left, upper left side of the line. And then for my next line, we're graphing y is greater than or equal to 1 half x plus 1. So we're going to use the line y equals 1 half x plus 1 to help kind of guide where a line should go and tell us what slope and y-intercept should be. So slope is always what's being multiplied by x. So in y equals 1 half x plus 1, the slope is 1 half. And then the y-intercept is always the constant. So the y-intercept is 1. So if my slope or, or sorry, if my y-intercept or b is 1, that means that I have to start at 1 on the y-axis, and my slope is 1, so it's telling me rise, or sorry, my slope is 1 half, so it's telling me that my rise is 1, my run is 2. So I have to go up 1, right 2. Since they're both positive, that's going to go both in the positive direction. So up 1, right 2, up 1, right 2, and I can draw as many points as I need, or I can even go in the opposite direction. I can go down 1, left 2. And then the next thing I need to do is decide whether or not I need a solid or a dashed line. So since this inequality symbol is y is greater than or equal to, it's going to be a solid line. So I have a solid line connecting my points. And then the next thing I need to do is just check to see whether or not my or what direction I need to shade. So because I've picked 0, 0 for everyone so far, I just want to show you one example of when you say you can't pick 0, 0. So I, I technically could pick 0, 0 for this inequality because 0, 0 is not on the line. But just to give you an example of when you can't, um, I'm going to pick the point, I think, 0, 2. So that point right above the line, I'm going to pick 0, 2 as my checking point. And you can pick any point that you want for your checking point. It's just that usually 0, 0 is the easiest. Or excuse me. You can pick any point that you want that's not on the line as your checking point. Just usually 0, 0 is the easiest, but it won't always be off the line. So if I picked 0, 2 as my checking point, that means that 0 is going to go in for x and 2 is going to go in for y. Because the x coordinate is 0 and the y coordinate is 2. So my inequality is y is less than or equal to 1 half x plus 1. I'm going to substitute in 2 for y. So 2 is greater than or equal to 1 half times x. And I'm going to substitute in 0 for x. So 1 half times 0 plus 1. And then I have 2 is greater than or equal to 1 half times 0 is just 0 plus 1. And then when I simplify the right side, I end up with 2 is greater than or equal to 0 plus 1, so 1. And my final simplified inequality is 2 is greater than or equal to 1, so that's true. So we shade the side of the line that included that point, 0, 2. So that was the top half of the line. And then our solution to this system is the region that's covered by both shaded areas, so the blue and the red, where they overlap. Okay, so that's it. Just to kind of summarize this lesson, in order to solve a system of linear inequality,